Vegas. The flooding scandal has dropped out of the news, but it's by no means over for more than a million people who've bought flats they can't remortgage or sell. The flats have cladding that's a fire risk and it has to be removed. Well, earlier this year, the government promised a new loan scheme to help flat owners in England and said that no one would have to pay more than £50 a month on any loan repayments. But those loans still aren't available. Some flat owners say they can't wait any longer. They're having to agree to huge costs for the removal of unsafe cladding just to keep their buildings insured. Derek Gordon's one of our listeners and he's in that situation. He lives in East London. The government certainly stated that no leaseholder would require to pay more than £50 a month towards the costs of removing the cladding. However, they have issued no information whatsoever about this loan scheme and there is no date as to when it comes into effect. It therefore puts us in a very difficult position because I have to make a decision within the next seven days to go ahead with the removal of this cladding and I have no idea whether the government will pay retrospectively for cladding that has already been removed. Derek says that he and 18 other owners have been told it's going to cost 136000 to remove the cladding on their block. It works out at around £7,500 a flat. They're being charged four times more than last year for insurance and they were hard-pressed to get it. Our insurance broker really worked very hard to try and get insurance for us and he was only able to get a quote from one insurance company and that company required us to remove the cladding within three months of the renewal date. It's almost impossible to do that within that time scale. So we have negotiated an extra month. We have to remove the cladding by the 10th of October. We're not sure whether they will refuse to insure us beyond that point or whether they will simply hike up the premium still further until the cladding is removed. This year the premium uh, was £33,400. Last year it was just above £11,000. And that was an increase from the previous years where it was in high single figures, about eight or nine thousand pounds. Well, that was Derek Gordon, one of our listeners. Lucy Brown is from the UK Cladding Action Group and she's done research on solutions to the cladding crisis. Lucy, these loans then to pay for dangerous cladding, how are they meant to work? Um... I would love to tell you, Winifred, but we have no (laughs) idea. They announced uh, the general concept of them on February 10th, and there's been no further detail since. So we don't know who will do the lending, how long the term will be, what the interest rate will be, who will be getting the loans. Is it the building? Is it the leaseholder? Is it the freeholder? We have absolutely no idea all these months later, sadly. Do you have any idea why they're not up and running? Um, I would, I would say probably because they're unworkable. The government looked at this in 2018 and decided against it. Um, the state of Victoria and Australia tried to do this and Australians refused to take the loans. Um, I don't see how they can make this work. And I'm hoping that they're also being mindful of the negative impacts that loans would have. So things like being able to get credit, it would reduce people's ability to do that. Um, It would also decrease the value of people's homes. Um, And in that way, they're sort of cruelly regressive because the lower the value of your home and the lower your income, the higher the percentage, the loan repayments are of your income and the higher percentage that you'll lose in the value of your property. Because people are worried about taking on a kind of open-ended commitment to pay even £50 a month and then that debt would perhaps have to be sold on with the property and they think that would put buyers off. That's right. And another dimension of the loans, which is troubling, is that they only cover the cladding portion. So if you have combustible balconies, if you have flammable insulation, if you have missing compartmentation, none of that is going to be covered. So all of that money has to be raised before any remediation works, cladding or otherwise, can take place. And unfortunately, um, an inside housing survey found that in the majority of these high-rise buildings, that um, the cladding um, issues 
were also accompanied by these other serious and costly fire safety defects. So are you saying you just don't think they'll happen at all? Um, I don't. And the, um, the Committee for Housing, Communities and Local Government recommended in April that the government abandon these plans. And I, I think they are very unlikely to be able um, to succeed because there are things like FCA regulations on affordability, which I doubt these loans would comply with. Um, I don't know how what would happen if, for example, you know, thirty percent of leaseholders in the buildings took the loans and the others refused them. Do the work still go ahead? I don't know. A government spokesperson told us they are going to go ahead, and that they will publish details on how exactly they're going to work soon. Right. <laughs> in the me- I think that's kind of the problem in a nutshell, isn't it? It's. Um, no deadline and no no detail. We were told it would be soon in the speech in February, but they didn't announce anything in the budget. They didn't announce any further detail in the Queen's speech or even, as promised, when they introduced the building safety bill in July. How many people are in Derek's situation, you know, where he can't delay, his block can't delay having the cladding removed and replaced or they just won't get insurance? Right. Well, on average... Um, insurance premiums have gone up 400%. So I think there are, um, are certainly hundreds of thousands of people in Derek's position in terms of skyrocketing premiums. This, um, this loan scheme, ter- sorry, it's yeah. just going to be for England, isn't it? What are governments in the other UK nations planning to do? So Scotland and uh, Wales are um, starting off much as the state of uh, Victoria did in Australia, and they are funding um, the surveys to be done first of the buildings. So uh, what they're doing with that is really having a clear picture of the number of buildings that are impacted and the nature and cost of these works that need to be done. And then from there, they're going to make a decision on how they're going to carry out the works and the funding that will be available. And what about Northern Ireland? Northern Ireland, from my understanding, only has a very small number of um, of affected buildings. I think they have a, a very small fund of about £1 million uh, for remediation, but I'm not sure uh, whether that will be changing. And the approach in Scotland and Wales, which I suppose is, a, is data gathering, it's several years mm-hmm. after the Grenfell fire, but you still think it's, the, it's a better approach? I absolutely do, because I think the current English approach puts the cart before the horse, because I don't think we can determine how much funding is needed until we know what the problem is. And what we see at the moment is this tremendous profiteering off leaseholders. So, for example, we have hundreds of buildings with waking watches in London, and they cost London leaseholders an average of £499 per month each and no waking watch has ever been proven to be effective Um, there's also the case of one west india key where uh, work that was quoted to remove two tiny strips of acm cladding at a cost of approximately two thousand five hundred pounds was funded by the building safety fund for approximately fifty thousand pounds and it included a twelve thousand pound fee to the managing agent Lucy Brown from the UK Cladding Action Group. Thank you.